Um, <laughs> I don't actually know what airline this is. So I'm here in the beautiful city of Islamabad in Pakistan. I really wish I could be staying here a little longer. My original plan for Pakistan was to spend a while here, head up to Gilgit and Skardu in the north of Pakistan. But unfortunately, with the current situation, I basically had to stay here at my hotel in Islamabad. But that's okay because I'm heading home today to Manchester and it's an interesting one because my flight home is booked with PIA. Um, but Unfortunately, PIA are banned from flying into the UK at the moment. Um, my flight is still scheduled. It's got a PK flight number. It's even still showing as a 777, um, but PIA are banned from flying into the UK. So I'm not entirely sure what's gonna to happen today. Um, let's head across to Islamabad International Airport and see what's going on and just if we can get home today. <laughs> I really was gutted I couldn't spend more time in Pakistan. I can't wait to go back and explore some more of this beautiful country. Islamabad Airport's brand new, only opened in a couple of years ago, and it replaces the old Benazir Bhutto Airport in Rabalpindi. Thank Indian. you. Have a good day. Manchester, yes. yes. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Manchester. Thank you. Security is, of course, tight to get into the terminal building, but once inside, you're greeted by the beautiful Brighton Airy Departure Hall. Hello, Manchester. <laughs> There's a dedicated business class check-in area for PIA as well as a dedicated security lane and passport control after check-in. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I headed up to the PIA lounge to wait for my flight. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. So the PIA lounge at Islamabad, and it's not too bad, it's a bit small and a bit of basic selection. The choice for breakfast is chicken nuggets, chicken samosa, or chicken spring roll. So if you like chicken, you're sorted here. I've still not got a clue what plane I'm flying on today. Still with absolutely no clue about which aircraft I'd be flying on today, it was soon time to head to the gate for my flight back to Manchester. Hello. 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 Yeah, good, thank you, sir. You are in the club class? Yes. Thank you. Thanks. You will board on the first bridge, sir. I don't know why he sounded so surprised. So here we go, and I started boarding the mystery plane at MSA 330 in a pretty smart but unbranded livery. Hello, good morning. Hello, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So the business class cabin of this mystery airline had a 222 config with five rows of business class. It didn't look fantastic, but it was still much better than the PIA 777 business class that I'd flown on the day before. Um, so this isn't PIA. Um, <laughs> I don't actually know what airline this is. Some sort of Airbus A330, by the looks of it. Um, I've no idea, but I'm on a plane heading home, which is the sort of main thing. Um, <laughs> it's very comfortable actually as well, very nice A330. Um, I'll speak to the crew and try and figure out what airline it is that's actually operating this flight. <laughs> So I was just chatting to the crew and I've just found out this flight is basically operated by a company called Highfly. They are a Portuguese charter airline. And actually, I just looked at the safety card. Highfly. Not entirely sure of the history of the plane or anything, but it's really nice. Very comfy. Okay, this might not be um, this might not be PIA um, aircraft, but. Um, 
we've got some PIA problems and um, apparently someone's just come on board and said that we've got too many passengers on board. I get how you can have less passengers on board, but how do you get too many? <laughs> Captain doesn't look too happy. the captain, he doesn't look too pleased. Okay, so another update, the, um, apparently they've put the cargo in the hold the wrong way around, so they've got to unload the entire cargo hold and reload it again. So <laughs> 40 minute delay now. The captain back on board, it seemed like finally we had some good news and we were able to get pushed back from the gate. On the track. Our route today then took us north out of Pakistan to cross Afghanistan, Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan into Russia. We flew just south of Moscow before crossing Belarus, Poland and Germany and crossing the north coast of Norfolk into Manchester. Flight time today was 8 hours and 13 minutes, cruising at 36 and 38,000 feet. Soon after takeoff, it was time for the first meal service. So then airborne from Islamabad on the A330, um, albeit about 50 minutes late with that delay. Um, but um, the captain's come on and he said that we should be kind of um, making pretty much an on-time arrival into Manchester later on in the flight. Dinner has just been served. And then we have a um, PIA catering on board still, even though it's uh, operated by this Highfly um, company. Um, the catering is all still done by PIA and, PIA and just um, served by my fly crew, which is nice. Don't know what's in this box, let's have a look. Adam's yogurt. Don't know if that's meant for me or for Adam, I don't know where Adam is, but um, some sort of dried salad thing. PIA napkin and the pièce de résistance. Something in a silver tray. Not entirely sure what. I don't know what this is, but um, <laughs> we'll give it a go, see what it tastes like. Hang on. Oy. Right, let's give this a go. Now, one thing that I have learned from traveling to some of these places is if you ever get given a salad, you just don't eat the salad. You don't know what it's been washed in or anything like that. So, salad goes. Um, I don't know what this is, but we'll give it a go. Is that meat or potato? Meaty. It's definitely meat. Ooh, it's definitely spicy as well. This thing. But we'll give it a go. It's a bit like an onion barge, but it's not. 
I have no idea what it is. It could be like roast dog for all I know, but it's quite tasty, so it's good. And then in the little, in this little tin thing, some sort of curry, curry something. we go vegetarian for eight hours and I ain't doing that. So then let's have a little bit of a look around the seat on this high fly Airbus A330. We've got a remote control for the telly. However, there isn't much on the telly. We have a choice of four TV programs to watch um, and that's it. <coughs> Nothing else. Um, no air show map, no Cameras, yeah, right. Um, nothing <laughs> really, just a basic sort of screen. In front of us, we have these little storage areas here, which sort of unlock and lock like that. Quite handy. Uh, there's a bottle holder down there. Things put bottles in, and then we've got like sort of storage area there. Um, ooh, okay. There is some sort of liquid included with the seat that's kind of, well, it was liquid once, stuck in there. That's nice. Um, one of those sockets, which I don't think I've seen since 1995, but um, a couple of drinks holders. Great with PIA catering. And the table pops out of here. That lifts up. And the table pops over like so. Not bad. Not bad really. And then we've got some sockets down here. So we've got three pin plug, a couple of USB sockets, and then down there is another headphone port. Finally the controls for the bed which are down here. And it looks like it goes live flat and got a light above your head. Different settings for the seat. Even like a lumbar support as well, which is quite nice. Um, so let me put the bed into ooh, sort of a lie flat position. Not entirely how how flat this lie flat bed goes, but I'll give it a go in a little while. But all in all, it's not too bad. Not many people on the flight. There's maybe a handful of people up here. They've got a maintenance team on board as well, presumably because they don't want the aircraft getting stuck down route in Islamabad uh, with no way of getting it fixed over there. So they've got a full maintenance team on board as well, which is interesting. Okay, so I've managed to put the bed into the lie-flat position. Um, it's not exactly lie-flat. as good as I can get it, um, never mind. Um, it's better than sitting upright, I think. When I keep, oh, yeah, it's not great. Um, there is a divider in the middle though, which comes out and gives us a little bit more privacy. Yeah, this, <laughs> this ain't gonna work. <laughs> The cabin crew came around to close all the window blinds, meaning we spent the rest of the flight in darkness. Okay, so an update on the um, flight, on the half fly see what I did there, ball right reference, no, no. Um, on the high fly A330, we've got about two hours to go now and the flight is it's dragging a bit, I'll be honest. I've kind of watched all the YouTube that I've got on my phone, um, there's nothing to watch on the IFE. Um, we can't see out the window because since about 20 minutes after takeoff, we've had all the window blinds shut and yeah, it's like a pitch black cabin even though it's the middle of the day and we take off at lunchtime and land at tea time but still for some reason they've made the cabin dark. Um, I just hate it when they do that though, I don't know about you, let me know down in the comments what you think but good lord, it just annoys me, it's like a daylight flight at both ends and um, 
as to what the cabin in darkness, but hey, not a lot you can do about it, but moan as I like to do, so. Okay, so a snack service has arrived. I've sneakily opened my window blind a little bit so you can actually see it. <laughs> I don't get told off, let's see what's in here. Diet Coke. Let's have a look what PIA's meal box is like. Okay. That pin. I have no idea what that is. Uh, looks very dodgy, but um, we'll see in a minute. A bit of cake. And a cob. Some sort of pink substance in it. I don't know. <laughs> well, first things first, I want to see what this wrap thing is all about in the tin foil. Let's have a look. Um, okay. You can't quite see that there. I'm guessing that's not a sausage roll. I have no idea. Let's have a Really what the heck is this? Inside it's like... It's like a sausage roll, but it's not, obviously, because it's been made in Pakistan, which is a devout Muslim country and they don't eat pork, so I've no idea <laughs> what it is. It tastes like pork. I really don't have to do so. Hmm. Not a clue. But it ain't no Greg sausage roll. I'll give him that. The suspicious looking sarni. Let's see what's in here. Mm, nice. Very nice. Ooh. It's like a coronation chicken, almost. Ooh. Oh, but a hell of a lot spicier. Wow. Whatever it is, it blows your socks off. Right. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to check out part one of this video flying on an actual PIA plane into Pakistan. Link's on the screen now. Fairly soon we were approaching the UK and starting our descent over Lincolnshire into Manchester. Stay in Manchester. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi, I know I have to go another one. Fly back into the UK at the Cheers, minute. You have to you. complete a form for Border Good Force and have it ready to show the immigration officers to ensure oh, okay. that you self isolate on your return. In my experience, this is the only time they've ever asked to see my form on arrival, but they do check up with phone calls regardless of whether they've seen it at the airport. So then back here at Manchester, a very rainy Manchester, very typically Manchester day actually, <laughs> here in the northwest of England after a flight on what turned out to be High Fly. Um, and it was quite a cool little flight as well, a lovely cabin crew as well, so thumbs up to them. Thanks so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>